Yes, uh, it is. It is uh, uh, especially a very ancient system, uh, like in Paris. And upgrading this system is a challenge that we are sharing with our friends of London. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the big uh, uh, question is to uh, keep constantly a high level of maintenance of this system and infrastructure to be able to have a, a, a regular service, a very high quality of service. And uh, uh, we have the same aims with uh, Metro uh, of London, but uh, sometimes our methods are different. Uh, we prefer in Paris a complete driverless system. Uh, London is uh, uh, promoting uh, new signaling systems, but uh, we are uh, uh, with the same ambition to be able to develop the public transport uh, for uh, the uh, next years. <laughs> well, well, well I, th I think, look, all metros can learn from each other. There's, I'm sure, some things w we do well in London that others look to. Uh, you know, I'm particularly proud of the personal service that we provide in terms of the number of, of staff, I think, pretty customer-focused staff, now passenger-focused staff we have on our, on our network. I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the fact we are converting a very old system uh, into a modern one uh, while we're keeping running it. That's a challenge. But, you know, equally, I'm really, uh, I would learn from people like Paris, who've done a huge amount of work in converting uh, their system into a fully automated operation. I think that's a, a really important example to look to. And then, of course, there's the newer, newer systems in China, uh, in Hong Kong, in South America. And, you know, we should, we should be able to learn from them as well because just because they're brand new doesn't mean uh, that there aren't uh, key lessons to learn in terms of how they exploit technology and how they uh, learn things at the cutting edge.